Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the pelvic femoral rhythm. But before going to the main topic, we first need to understand what is an open chain and closed chain kinematics for hip. Now we have discussed about open and closed chain kinematics in knee, which is very simple to understand. But for hip, it's little bit complex because the hip is more centrally placed. So understanding closed kinematic chain can get little trickier. So I'll talk about that first and then we'll go on to the pelvic femoral rhythm, which is a pretty small topic in comparison. So first, let us start with the open and closed kinematic chain. Where did this term come from? So open chain meaning one end of the chain is fixed and the other end of the chain is open to move and closed chain means both the ends of the chain are fixed. So if I take an example, so if we take the thread and fix it proximally and move it distally, this is an open chain because it is fixed proximally and open distally, right? Open chain. And what is closed chain? I said it is fixed at both the ends and the middle part of the chain is moving chain or thread same thing right so so what happens in closed chain is when i do a movement over here you can see there is a movement that is happening over here too so when the both the ends are fixed and if you do any movement there is compensatory movements that are happening at the other places but wherein but whereas in open chain this won't happen if i fix it proximally and if i do some movement the movement will be happening only at that spot so this is what happens in our bodies too. Okay, so let's go back to the open chain. So in open chain for your pelvis, your legs will be fixed on the ground and trunk will be moving with the pelvis. So if you take example of Joe, his legs are fixed on the ground. And then if he's doing anterior pelvic tilt, he'll be bending forward, right? He'll be bending forward. And with that, his trunk and head will also move. This is an open chain kinematic because his leg is fixed and his other end the distal end is moving it's free to move okay right so this is a open chain simple right now what is a closed chain in closed chain your legs will be fixed both the ends right in closed chain both the ends will be fixed so what is your first end first end yours is your legs and the second end is your head right so what is the position in which your head and the legs will be fixed you can't think of a position right because it's very hard to fix your head Legs we can understand, but head is little hard. So let's look at that. So your legs will be fixed and trunk does not move. Only pelvis moves. Okay. So your pelvis will be moving just like how I said over here, both the ends are fixed and there will be movement in the middle, right? The pelvis will be moving. That is maybe anterior, posterior pelvic tilt, or there is lateral tilt or rotation, whatever movements we discussed about the pelvis in our last video. So all these movements will be occurring, but your head and the leg or head and the trunk, you can say, will be fixed. So how does this happen? Now, this is where the concept of functional closed chain comes into play. Now here we see that legs are fixed and they are fixed structurally. But over here, the other end that is your head, if needs to be fixed, this will be fixed functionally. What do I mean by functionally? The body will keep the head over the sacrum. That is, it will maintain the position. It will fix the head with the help of optical writing and tonic labyrinthine reflex. Now, this is a visual reflex and this is a primitive reflex. And what do these reflexes do? They help your body to maintain the head in the right position. Okay. Like right above the sacrum so that it is fixed. So this is something which is seen from birth that you try to keep your head at the level with both your eyes on in the same level. So this is the primitive function that we see. And this is how your head is fixed. It is fixed functionally. Okay. It is not fixed structurally. There's nothing pressing on top of your head, but it is fixed functionally. And on the other end, your legs are fixed structurally. Okay. 
So I'll explain this little bit further. So now to understand this better, I'll introduce you to an application of the same closed kinematic chain in a clinical scenario and I'll explain you how it works. So if you see an anterior pelvic tilt, it can happen in two ways, right? One is open chain where your trunk goes down that we discussed right now. Trunk will go down like this. This is an open chain movement. And what will be a closed chain movement? Your trunk and head will be maintained in the same position, but your pelvis will go for anterior tilt, right? I'll show you how this happens. I can't do it on Joe because his pelvis is fixed. So along with this, there is a catch to it that when I said when there is a closed chain, so if there is a closed chain and when I move some proximal segment, there will be compensation that will be happening because the end part are fixed, right? The end parts are fixed. So there has to be some compensation within the chain. So that's what we are talking about. There is a compensation at the lumbar spine that is lumbar extension or lumbar lordosis will be seen along with your anterior pelvic tilt. This happens in your closed chain. Let me explain you how. So let us see what happens in the anterior pelvic tilt, how your body compensates. Okay. So this is your anterior pelvic tilt, right? So what happens in your open kinematic chain with your anterior pelvic tilt, your trunk will go with the pelvis and this will be your open kinematic chain where your body is not fixed on both the ends, right? It is only fixed at the ground. Now, what will be happening in closed kinematic chain? At the ground, it will be fixed structurally by your foot and on the head, it will be fixed functionally, right? The functional closed chain and your trunk will be fixed. So your pelvis will be going anteriorly. So there will be anterior pelvic tilt, okay, at the hip and your trunk and head will be fixed, but there will be compensation to keep the head and the trunk fixed. There will be your lumbar lordosis, right? The lumbar lordosis will be increased. So if a patient or if a person has tight rectus femoris, his pelvis will be anteriorly tilted, but he won't be walking like this, right? His body will correct itself. It will get the trunk and head into the right position, but with a compensation that is your lumbar lordosis, which will cause problem in his low back, right? So that will be the reason for the low back pain. Now let us go to another example and look at the similar case. Now take an example where there is a leg length discrepancy. Okay. So if your right leg is shorter compared to your left leg, what will happen? Your pelvis will be dropping down, right? It will be dropping down. Now what happens in an open kinematic chain? Your trunk will be going down like this because the upper part is free to move but our body is in a functional closed kinematic chain, right? So your trunk will correct itself. Your head will get the body back into the right position by what optical writing and tonic labyrinthine reflex, right? So both these will correct your body, but there will be a compensation over here. What will be the compensation? Your lumbar spine will be going to the other side. There will be lateral flexion of your lumbar spine just to keep your trunk straight, right? You can't just walk like this. So to correct that your lumbar spine will be going to the lateral flexion and this, what will it do? It will cause pain in your left low back, right? It will cause pain in your left low back. There can be a problem in the facet joint of your left lower back. So that will happen in your functional closed kinematic chain. So this is a very good application that we see with open and closed kinematic chain in case of hip joint. Okay, so that was about your open and closed kinematic chain. I hope I made this concept very clear. I'll try to make another detailed video on open and closed kinematic chain where I will be talking about more practical stuff, but we'll keep that for later. Now going to the next part, the pelvic femoral rhythm, which is analogous to your scapulohumeral rhythm, meaning they are very similar. So what is the main similarity about them? Both of them helps to increase your range of motion. How? See, it increases the range of motion with your pelvis, spine, that is the lumbar spine and the hip, right? So if you are doing your hip flexion, if the hip is only working, you can only go till 90 degrees. But then with your anterior pelvic tilt and also flexion at your lumbar spine, you can go even further down, right? So that is how your pelvic femoral rhythm increases your range of motion. And this pelvic femoral rhythm varies from person to person. That is how much 
the pelvis is helping in flexion how much the femur or the hip joint is contributing in flexion and how much lumbar spine is contributing so these varies with person to person and also if you change the weight or the pressure that is applied all these factors determine the different pelvic femoral rhythms okay and if you see there it is very similar to your scapulohumeral rhythm what happens in scapulohumeral rhythm when you are lifting your arm upward your humerus can only go up to 90 degree right and then later if you want to go higher than that your scapula has to go for upward rotation and increase the range so it's very similar that way to your pelvic femoral rhythm now i'll give you two examples where this pelvic femoral rhythm actually happens okay so first example would be when you are doing a hip flexion there is also lumbar spine flexion that is happening along with that there will be also thoracic spine flexion that will be seen so this is how the range of motion increases along also with the pe pelvis that is the anterior pelvic tilt right another example would be abduction of the hip so another example would be abduction of the hip so when you are doing abduction of the hip there will be also pelvic hike which will increase the range of motion and also lateral flexion of the lumbar spine which can also increase your range of motion let me show you how so now let's look at these examples quickly so if we want to increase the flexion at your hip joint or flexion at your hip complex your pelvis will go for anterior tilt but after a certain point your range will be restricted right then your lumbar spine will go for flexion and it will increase the range now same thing again will happen at your abduction so abduction will be done at the hip then to increase the abduction even more your pelvis will go for hiking and then also your lumbar spine can go for lateral flexion to increase your abduction so that is how the ranges are increased at your pelvis and hip joint by combined effort of all the joints so with that we finish up the topic we talked about the open and closed kinematic chain which was very very interesting then we talked about the application of closed kinematic chain how your body compensates and how these compensations can lead to the different problems like back pain then we went to the pelvic femoral rhythm which is very similar to scapulohumeral rhythm because it helps you increase the range of motion by introducing pelvis and lumbar spine into the same movement of flexion and then we finally looked at the two examples where pelvic femoral rhythm helps you increase the range of motion right So with that we finish off the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video